Hello everyone! Today I am here to talk about all of the books I read in the month of July. So July was another great reading month for me. I read 14 books which is awesome. This year I said especially I've been reading a lot and I'm happy about that. I think COVID is a big part of that which is you know. I will leave my book reviews down below. I've done some where I've done three all in one. There's some reading vlogs I've done where I've read a majority of these books and as always with my reading wrap-ups I'm gonna start with my least favorite book working up to my favorites. 14 books so let's get into it. The first book I'm going to talk about is You Stay at First by Katie Cadogno. I gave this one a two out of five. I, I have such a love not like with Katie Catugno books. I really like her earlier ones, How to Love in 99 Days, and her latest ones I really haven't liked, such as Fireworks, um, Top 10, and including You Say It First. I thought it had a really cool premise where it's about a character named Colby, and I forget the girl's character's name. Basically, she works at like this voting call center where she'll call people and see if they're registered to vote, and if they're not, she'll just help register, to, and if not, she'll just help register them to vote. Um, they're not affiliated with a party or anything, they just really want people to be registered to vote. And then she calls Kobe one night, and they get an argument, he hangs up on her, and she calls him back to apologize, and it begins a relationship with them with texting, calling, and then they decide to form an actual relationship, and things get really dicey from there. This is a book that's all about two characters that are very, very different. You have, I want to say her name is Meg, <laughs> who is very, you know, aware of political things, feminism, things like that. She cares a lot. And then Colby just doesn't. He's had a lot of things going on with his life with one of his parents passing away. And he's just very aloof, I would say. And they're just not paired well together. I think that was my main criticism about this book is I just didn't like either of the characters. So sad to say I gave it a two out of five. I don't love giving books two out of five. I really don't. Next up, another two out of five, sadly, is The Mall by Megan McCafferty. I read this because it's a book about the 90s set in a mall, which is amazing because we all know I love the 90s. I did a whole 90s themed vlog where it was all based on a pop culture readathon about 90s movies. So the 90s, I'm here for it. I'm ready for it. Hope you're ready for another one of those vlogs coming soon from a different decade. But this one is all about a character named Cassie and she um, works in the mall and then she finds out that her boyfriend was cheating on her. She breaks up with them so she can't work because they were having plans to work together at America's Best Cookies so she can't work there. So she can't work there anymore so she gets a job at this really small boutique with like her ex-best friend and her mom that owns the shop and basically it's like a treasure hunt within the mall because there's like this missing treasure that was put there when this mall was built and Cassie and her ex-best friend go off to find it. I gave it a 2 out of 5 because not a lot happened. There was really no plot of this book. Also, Cassie was just a very wishy-washy character I didn't really love. She really cared about appearances and what people thought about her and a whole bunch of other things. And I think if you don't, if you're not die-hard 90s fan, I would not recommend reading this book because it name drops music, movies, mall stores especially. Um, and if you're not a huge 90s fan, I don't think you'll really love it. I am one, but in this book takes place in 1991 and I was only like three when this book was set to take place. So maybe that's why I don't love it as much. Maybe if there was a book that was like in the mall of 2000, I'd probably like it, but I don't know. Either way, I gave it a 2 out of 5. I really wanted to love it, but I would recommend, if you're a diehard Nandy's fan, I would recommend you check this out. Also, they sent me this really cool brochure of the mall. It's like a whole 90s thing. It's even like the mall inside Cassie's mall. That's pretty cool. But this one is like, I think a lot of people could love it, but I think a good majority maybe won't. Sad to say. Next up is Last Hang Standing by Lauren Ho. Please forgive me if I've forgotten some of the characters' names, especially with ebooks. I don't have it physically in front of me, and this is the case with this one. This is about a character that is literally the last Tang, or her last name is Tang. I think her name's Andrea, and she is the last one that's not married in her whole like family, and that's really frowned upon in her culture. And so she's on a search to try to find somebody, and there's also kind of a hate to love relationship with a co worker of hers. This is really told, it's really pitched as Bridget meets Jones meet Crazy Rich Asians, which I would agree with. It's written like very much in a diary format, which I enjoyed, but I just didn't love it a ton. I don't know if that's the writing style I didn't really love or something like that. It was cute, but it wasn't like super rememberable, which is why I gave it a three. It was just a middle of the road one for me, which three, by the way, as I say time and time again on my videos, a three star rating is not a bad rating for me. Usually if a book's a one or two, that's like, mm, probably not. If it's a three, I think it's a solid read, but that's just me. 
<laughs> Next up, we have Dear Emmy Blue by Leah Lewis. I so desperately wanted to love this. The reviews on this are amazing. A lot of people have given it a four or five. I gave it a three. So in this book, we follow a character named Emmy. And Emmy, years ago, released this balloon into the sky with like the, her biggest secret and also her email address. And then this guy named Lucas, I think that's his name, <laughs> picks it up. And they become best friends. And Emma has loved him for forever. She's been pining for him. They're now adults. They're like in their 30s. And one day when like Lucas is professing something to her, she thinks he's finally going to tell her that he loves her. But he tells her that, she's, that he's getting married and that he wants her to to be her best man and it just really breaks Emmy's heart and it's all about her self-discovery of love and things like that and I did enjoy it it does have a little bit of a love triangle which I don't hate in books but Emmy was just a character that I couldn't relate to a ton because she was so hung up on this one guy that so clearly did not really have the same feelings for her but yet she would drop everything for her in a heartbeat and I just I don't know I just wanted to love this it was cute it was heartwarming I will say that and I did love the romance that eventually blossomed in this book I won't spoil it for you but I just wanted more from it and that's just me I haven't heard a lot of people talk about this book but I would recommend it if you're looking for something like heartwarming and quick to read and with a little dash of a love triangle but it was cute I just didn't love it. So I gave it a three out of five. I promise and all the books I read this month were just okay. Next up is Hate to Want You by Alicia Rye. I read this one on a whim because I've read two other of Alicia Rye's books and I really like them. And this book Forgive me, I forgot the characters' names. But basically, they have warring families like Romeo and Juliet, the Capulets versus the Montagues. That's the only comparison I can think of when talking about this book. And their families used to be BFFs. They had this grocery store together. And then something happened with the male character's dad. Something happened with the male character's mom and the female character's dad. And they were in a relationship at the time and they had to break up. And years later, their families like hate each other. But secretly, they meet each other once a year and like get together and basically the female character comes back to town. I'm so sorry, I forgot the characters' names, please forgive me. Things happen from there. It's really truly a hate to love romance and I usually love those books but somehow I just didn't love this one. I think because I just couldn't get behind the whole families hating each other. I felt like that was very juvenile and the parents kept taking it out on the kids which had nothing to do with it. Like they did, like why would they have anything to do with it. So it's three out of five. I've heard from a lot of you guys that this series is a lot better, books two and three especially. So I will continue off it because overall I really love her writing style and I do love her steamy scene. So I'm very invested in it and I will continue with the series. But I don't think this is gonna be my favorite one in the series. So it gets a three out of five for me. Next up is Vanessa Yu's Magical Paris Tea Shop by Rosalind Lim. This one wins the award for the longest title. And if you haven't guessed it, it's about Vanessa Yu. And she is a character that sees prophecies like when people drink around her and she looks in their cup or something she can see a vision sometimes of like oh your best friend is gonna move away in a year or oh your husband's gonna cheat on you in a year and things like that and she really does not love this vision she really does not love this gift of clairvoyance at all her aunt shares it with her and her aunt decides to open up a tea shop in Paris and she's like come with me I'll teach you more about this gift and you can get a hone on it but Vanessa just doesn't want to do anything with it she wants to find love she wants to be happy she wants to be rid of this clairvoyance and the book is all about that her going to Paris and maybe finding love and dealing with her gift and overall it was cute I will say if you're a big foodie definitely check out this book because the Parisian food is just everywhere in this book and I did enjoy that as well as a lot of like tea talk and things but it was okay um, I think I just don't jive well with Rosalind's writing um, but that's just me but it was magical it was sweet and it did have a great familial aspect into it I did want a little more romance into it maybe that's why I didn't love it as much but I would recommend it especially like I said if you're a foodie food galore in this book so I enjoyed it for that matter for sure. Next up is 10 Things I Hate About Pinky by Sinan Menon. This is the third and final book in the When Dipple Met Rishi series. This one follows characters Pinky and Samir who were previously in the last book There's Something About Sweetie and basically it's like a fake dating trope because Pinky's kind of rebellious and doesn't go well with her conservative parents but Samir is like every conservative parent's dream so she's like hey let's fake date to appease my parents and you'll get an internship out of it. So they do that and of course 
You can guess what happens. Feelings arise. It was cute. I liked it. A three out of five. I always enjoy Medon's books, but I will say my favorite in the series is definitely There's Something About Sweetie. I just connected with her so much, and the romance was just so adorable in that book. That's definitely my favorite of the whole series, honestly. I would love to know what your favorite is, but this was cute. I just didn't love Pinky as much as I wanted to, and I like Samir, but there's just something about Sweetie. Oh man, I didn't even plan that. There's literally something about Sweetie that I love. But I enjoyed this one and I would recommend this series if you want a cutesy YA contemporary one. It fits the bill for it, for sure. Next up is Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is an adult fantasy book, I will say. Please forgive me again as I forgot the character's name because I read it so early on in the month. But it's basically about a character that lives in this town called Bethel. I do remember that. And it's very like an old school town. We don't ever know what year this is in. And basically Bethel was ruled by this guy called the Prophet. And it's like a cult. I'm just going to say it. Very religious cult where you have to do everything by the Prophet. Women are really frowned upon with doing anything. The Prophet has multiple wives, has multiple children with different wives. And basically we follow this character that is mixed because her mom met with like an out-towner guy and who was black and so she's really frowned upon a lot and she's just questioning a lot of things that are happening in this town because this town also has some woods and like you're forbidden to go in those woods because there are witches and evil things in there but of course she is really drawn to the woods and it is very interesting I would have rated it a four out of five but the ending I didn't love it was very fast-paced it kind of almost didn't make sense but I really loved her discovering more about this town and about this cult and finally opening her eyes up to it. I don't read a lot of cultish books because they quite frankly scare me <laughs> but it was interesting and the cover for this book I need to buy a copy of it because the cover is just stunning. I gave it a three out of five and I would recommend it. Next up is The Shadows by Alex North. I finally stomached enough courage to read an Alex North book because his books scare me. So I buddy read this with Gabby over Gabby Reads and we had a great time buddy reading it. So this book like has two timelines. We have one back in the past where we follow a character named Paul Adams. He has a friend um, and basically these two other guys befriend them. One of his name is Carly. One of their names is Charlie Crabtree and he's kind of different and he really likes different things and basically a murder happens where Charlie has murdered somebody and Charlie disappeared after that and nobody knows what happened but since that killing there's been so many copycat killings that everyone just doesn't even think about it and then years later when Paul's a grown-up he comes back to the town where this murder happened and he has to take care of his mother and more copycat killings are happening closer to home so he decides to try to figure out what is going on and it's a very interesting book where it's definitely a mystery thriller but it has a lot of like I don't want to say paranormal aspects to it but almost kind of paranormal I was I'm so torn on giving this a three or four because because 75% of this book I loved it was definitely a four out of five for me and then the ending hit and I didn't love one of the big twists because there were multiple twists in this book and some of them I loved some of them I was okay with and then there was one that I was like oh and that just really hindered my rating for it but this book is it creepy? Absolutely. Is it very as atmospheric and has really Slenderman vibes to it? Uh, definitely. I, I did enjoy his writing style a ton and I will read The Whisper Man and I would recommend this especially if you like those creepier ones where it's like a big mystery and then uh, just I really did enjoy it. I wish the ending was a little bit better so I can give it a four. I'm still debating on it. Next up is A Sweet Mess by JC Lee. I gave this one a three out of five as well. I really enjoyed it. Forgive me, I forgot the character's name because it's an e-arc. Um, but I do believe this one's actually being picked up either for a movie or a TV show, which I think is a great idea because we follow this character who is who owns this cupcake or bakery, if you will. And basically one night she meets this guy, I think his name's Nick. Um, uh, horrible. And they get together that one night and the next night, like, He's pretty much gone and turns out he's this big time food critic and he came to her bakery one day 
and he got the special the day and he opened up like his box and he ate his bunk cake and there was like dummy worms and peanut butter and disgusting stuff so he writes a really scathing review about it little does he know he got the wrong cake the worker at this girl's bakery shop gave him like a 10 year old birthday cake that she wanted all this stuff and so it's really hindering her business because people aren't coming and she's supposed to have a bigger building soon and so in order to make up for it he like takes her away to this town in California to help film this like baking thing and of course things happen from there it was cute it is the epitome of a cute cupcake bakery type of book that I really do enjoy so I would recommend it and I will be checking out the TV show or movie when it comes out I don't know which one it is <laughs> Next up, I have This Time Tomorrow by Tessa Bailey, which I gave a 4 out of 5. This is a sequel to Reborn Yesterday, which we all know I've talked about repeatedly on this channel. It's a vampire romance that I love and adore. In this book, we follow characters named Roshaka, please forgive me, and Elias. In the first book, they definitely had a lot of chemistry of like hate to love. And in this book, it gets further more into it. Basically, she's a vampire slayer and he's a vampire. So did this give me strong Buffy and Angel vibes? You bet. And I freaking loved it. It was very intense, very like, oh, hate, 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 but love, love, love. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I didn't love it quite as much as Reborn Yesterday because Reborn Yesterday was just like that sweet, cute love vampire, <laughs> is that the right thing to say? But this one wasn't quite there for me yet, but I still really enjoyed it and like I said, give, and like I said, gave me such strong Buffy and Angel vibes, which we all know. It's like my favorite ship of all time. I said it, I know there's a lot of Buffy and Spike people out there, I know, I like Buffy and Angel better. Next up, we have The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is her first published book, and this follows a character named Zamora, who is really struggling a lot with her faith because her mom really pushes it in her face a lot, and she's also struggling with deciding to join her school slam poetry team. This book is written in verse, and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. The reason why I didn't give it a 5 out of 5, because Clap When You Land was just so... I just love that one so much. Like there were so many pages I bookmarked that really resonated with me. And this one was there, but not quite there yet. Like to the clap when you land, if that makes sense. But I really enjoyed that this book talked about questioning faith because I think a lot of people go through that, teenagers especially, because everything's changing in their world and something they've known all along maybe is not what they know. Also this has a lot of family talk. Her family is very hard on her, doesn't let her do anything, and she meets a guy and it's just a really beautifully told book and the ending wrapped up really nicely and I have read all of her books. I would recommend all of her books. She is a great author and I really love her books in verse the most because I can tell that is where her strength lies because I do think she writes slam poetry and it's just so strong and it teaches you so much. So I love her books and I'm kind of sad I've read all of them now because I can't read anymore so I hope she writes more soon. <laughs> I have What You Wish For by Catherine Center. This book we follow a character, oh my goodness, named Samantha who is a school librarian and basically what happens is the school's principal where she works at dies and he's very beloved and there's a new principal coming into town and she knows who it is. His name's Duncan and they have a history together. They work together at this other school and he's very fun and happening and with it. So she's like, he's going to be a great principal. And he comes and he's very different from the man that she knew all those years ago. He's very um, harsh and wants security and things like that. And this book is all about her trying to figure out what has happened to him to change his outlook on life and things like that. And I really enjoyed it. Catherine Center just does a really great job, I think, talking about mental health while also keeping it light and also really building up a really cute romantic relationship. This isn't my favorite by hers. My definite favorite will always be Things You Save in the Fire. I just love and adore that one. But this one I did really enjoy and would recommend. All right, my favorite book of July and my only five out of five is this time, no, it's Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel Lynn Solomon. This is her third book and the third book I've read by her. Very different from her first two. They were like sadder, bittersweet type of books and this one's definitely much more lighthearted. In this book we follow a character named Rowan who has like this relationship with this guy named Neil who they are like rivals at school. They're always going after each other like who's gonna get the most A's, perfect attendance, da 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 da. And then announced on the last day of school Neil wins for valedictorian and Rowan's really defeated. But later that night there's this game called How where in Seattle it's like this big senior game of scavenger hunt slash tag and they decide this will be their last like um 
competition and they get paired up together and it's a hate to love romance and it was just so amazing it's set in seattle it takes place in a day they reference 10 things i hate about you have i sold you on this yet i hope i do <laughs> i loved it as always i love her books she always weaves jewish faith into it because she is jewish and i always appreciate learning more about that and it's just like an epitome of a summer book it's sweet it's beautiful it's got some depth to it I'm obsessed. I think this book will put her on the map and I'm excited for it, but I do recommend you read her other two books. Just, no, it's not light and fluffy as this one. <laughs> So there you have it. Those are all the books I read this month. Sorry for all the noise. That is my child. But I hope you got some recommendations or not some recommendations. I would love to hear what she read in July. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.